Hi, my name's Johnny, and today we are finally checking out the SB2 from GNL. So a lot of you in the comments have been saying, try a GNL, try a GNL, you like a Squire, try a GNL. And here we are, based on your recommendations, I managed to get a GNL on the channel and I'm so excited. For those that don't know, GNL is basically the love child of, of Leo Fender and George Fullerton. George being G, Leo being the L. So Leo Fender obviously went from Fender Music Man, GNL. So GNL theoretically should be guitars and innovation in its final form from the fathers that made the electric guitar what it is today. This bass is made in Indonesia and retails for around... But let me just have a quick look for you. The SB2 is part of the Tribute series, which comes out of Indonesia. And at a price point of £450, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. Now, from my understanding, this is actually using Amer some American parts that is just then put together in Indonesia. So although you're paying a cheaper price, you're not compromising on actual quality of the components you've got in there. So let's start from the top. This isn't going to be too spec heavy. I'm not going to tell you all the bits and bobs and what it's got because you can go and read that. The link will be in the description as well as a load of other useful links for you. So go and check out the spec list down below. Starting from the top, we have got GNL's own tuners and their signature style headstock. And what's amazing is that I've now got a base and a bottle opener all in one. Now this kind of fish hook style look isn't going to be for everyone. And initially it wasn't really for me, but I actually really like it. So now I really like this headstock and I think the tuners are pretty good too. They're not the best, but they, they do a good job. So we've spoken about the headstock. Let's move on to one of my favorite things about this bass and that is the neck. Ah, ah. Lovely satted finish on the back. Mwah. My favorite, you know I love it. I don't like these sticky gloss finishes. I can live with it, but if you're getting sweaty at show and this guy sweats, a lot. Let's like have that satin finish, it's really nice and fast, and this is no exception. From a from a P bass style guitar, I kind of want the neck to be a bit fatter compared to a modern C shape on a jazz bass. I want it to be a bit fatter so that I, I'm almost limited a bit more. P bass really comes alive when you're playing simpler things, I think. I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm sure there are a few of you at home that can kind of relate to what I'm saying there in that you kind of want it to be a bit more limiting. But at the same time, it's super comfy and super fast. It's that perfect sweet spot between like a jazz bass and a 50 style P bass, where it's not too big in your hands, but it's this nice fit. It's like the Goldilocks of necks. It's not too big, it's not too small, it's just right. So moving on up, the fretwork is outstanding. There is nothing at all poking out on this thing and it is just, a joy to play, honestly. Now the body shape initially was a sticking point for me where I didn't really like this bass at first. This bass in particular comes in all black or a really cool surf green with a white pit guard and a maple neck. For me, the black and black helps to hide the kind of curvy nature of this body. And there's nothing wrong with a curvy body, let me tell you that. But on this bass in particular, it looked like a P bass that was trying to copy a B P bass, but trying to make it a bit different. The the swoops and curves are a bit like, they're a bit too intense, I think. I personally preferred the overall looks of the LB100, but actually in person, I think this thing looks really cool. Since I've had it, I haven't been phased by the body shape at all, and it's really comfy, really ergonomic, and yeah, feels great. 
Let's talk about this bridge. This is something that I really like about GNLs. Instead of their standard vintage style bridge that you might get on a Fender, one of the things that GNL is known for are their bridges. Comes standard with this high mass GNL bridge. Just feels fantastic. Adds a nice bit of weight. And in the tone, I feel like I can hear the qualities you get from a high mass bridge. This powerful and long lasting sustain. So one thing that is okay about this model in particular is the knobs. You know I like a good knob normally um, and these are fine. The tone knob feels great and when I pull it hard enough it pops off which is great because when I want to take the film off that was covering the scratch plate I kind of want to take the knob off to make sure that there's nothing underneath. The other knob though really I can't get it off. <laughs> it is like stuck on there. It actually means that I've still got a bit of the film trapped underneath which you know isn't ideal but that's just a minor thing really. Now I've owned this from new it's not been anywhere the only other niggle I have is that the input jack comes loose pretty quickly it's a pretty common thing on more affordable bases just means you've got to keep tightening it up a little bit. Now we've got a PJ configuration and the control figuration is volume volume and that's it. Before we get into that Let's have a listen to what these pickups sound like. We're going to be playing a handful of styles, all going through the Line 6 HX Stomp with the Ampeg SVT4 Pro Amp Sim and the matching 810 cab. Thank you. 
<sighs> so I cannot fault the sound of these pickups. They the P bass is really nice and aggressive, and the jazz bass is surprisingly punchy and full sounding as well. Blending the two together, you start to get like more P bass kind of sounds and until you're about 75% on, and then you start getting into more like really gnarly PJ configuration. And if you're looking for a PJ and you want that PJ sound, this is it. The only downside about them, I think, is that because they're kind of rounded on the edges, you don't get that nice thumb rest as much. I found my thumb like slipping off in places and having to adapt my finger playing style a little bit. But you know, that's not really a deal breaker. But what is a deal breaker is the lack of tone knob on here. What's the purpose? I mean, you know, if you asked me a couple of years ago, I'd be like, I don't care, it's like it's built for me. I don't want a tone knob. Some people don't want a tone knob. But I definitely think that g and are kind of alienating a massive market of people that this bass would otherwise appeal to. Whilst I think these pickups sound phenomenal, I think that sometimes it would benefit from rolling off the tone a little bit because I don't wanna dip the volume down a little bit. I still want them both to be there. Just being able to dial it back a little bit would be nice. You can't quite get the same effect by just turning down the volume. It is a shame that that is a missing feature and I don't really know why. Uh, maybe it was marketed towards being this rock bass and that you don't want a tone knob, but you know, a lot of people out there do. So apart from that, design issue, which is gonna put a, a lot of people off. I think this is a fantastic bass, and although you're paying a little bit more, I think this bass does definitely outshine the Squire Classic Vibe range. And I've tried quite a lot of those Classic Vibes, but honestly, nothing has come close to this in terms of feel and just my overall positive opinion, like straight away. And I really like the classic vibe range. I think it's fantastic. This being my first impressions of GNL, it's a fantastic one. I don't have too much to fault about it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit that like button. It takes two seconds and it really, really helps me out. Because otherwise the video gets lost in the YouTube algorithm and we want more people to see it. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.